Hello, this is John Schaap and welcome to another video in the AOS 8 series. Uh, in this part we're going to look, uh, have a look at uh, how to build a layer 3 mobility master redundancy. So uh, in previous video I showed you already how to do layer 2 mobility master redundancy. Uh, we're going to do that now uh, uh, with two mobility masters, this one VMM2 and VMM3. And uh, you should assume that they are both in a different data center uh, with a different layer 3 VLAN as you can see. This one is in uh, 202 and the other one is in 203. Um, if you want to do layer 2 uh, mobility master uh, redundancy, uh, they obviously need to be in the same VLAN because it's layer 2 and we use VRP in that case. In this case VRP is not used because the both mobility masters are layer 3 separated. If you want to do uh, um, redundancy to the extreme, you can also build in a data center, of course, layer 2 redundancy. And on top of that, between the two data centers, use layer 3 redundancies. So then you will have four uh, mobility masters, uh, two in data center A and two in data center B. Uh, inside the data center, they have uh, layer 2 um, redundancy with a VRP IP address and then between the two data centers you will have disaster recovery between data center A and data center B. In this example I'm just going to show you how to do it with uh, two mobility masters, so VMM2 and VMM3. Uh, in case you start uh, or want to use uh, layer 3 uh, mobility master redundancy, you also need to change the config of your managed devices. So I'm going to show you how to configure a, a virtual mobility controller uh, uh, so that it will use uh, the two layer 3 separated uh, mobility masters. Uh, that goes for any MD, so uh, it can be a, a virtual mobility controller, but also a uh, physical managed device uh, that you run under this uh, mobility master. So I'm going to first show you how to configure um, layer 3 redundancy uh, at the two mobility masters. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using software version 8.2.1.0. That's the most recent version. Uh, and that means that the layer 3 redundancy can only be configured in the command line interface. Um, you cannot do this from the web interface yet. That will be added in a later version. So configuring it is uh, pretty simple. Um, you go to configure mode and then type master layer 3 redundancy. And in there, you say, what is the sync state of this node? So this is going to be the primary one. This is going to be the, the primary mobility master. The other one, uh, of course, will be the secondary. You can set the layer 3 sync time to 2. And, of course, you have to tell where the other peer can be found. So type in the IP address of the other mobility master that was in 203. And communication again is via IPsec. So you need a pre-shared key. Write it to mem. And you will see it over there in the configuration. Sorry. So here is everything you need for layer 3 redundancy. Of course, on the other note, it needs to be done also. Uh, so we go there. Also, we do conf t uh, master redundancy. No, you have to use the L3 word. Okay. So L3 sync state is a secondary for this one. L3 sync time is also two. And L3 pair appears is 102202 20 and the same IPsec key. So there you see the same config, but the only difference is that this one is a secondary and the other one oh is is the primary. 
so when that is done you can uh, issue show master l3 redundancy it tells you the role the peer ip address and the preset key the same on the other mobility master of course that's secondary show crypto ip sec as a and this is the one that we're looking for between 202 and 203 is an ipsec you will see the same thing here between 203 and 202 is the ipsec tunnel so they are communicating uh, with each other if you do uh, show database synchronize on the active mobility master you will see that uh, l2 of course is disabled because we did not configure l2 and l3 periodic synchronization is enabled and runs every 120 minutes uh, so if you want to do it right away just issue database synchronize and if you then do show database synchronize again you will see one layer 3 has been attempted and that it is uh, working if you go to the backup and issue show master l3 redundancy config sync status you will see how many successful syncs have been performed and when the last one was done so the active and the backup mobility master are now talking and synchronizing to each other so now it's time to look at how to configure a managed device Okay, my uh, virtual mobility controller has uh, booted and you now see the initial uh, setup dialog uh, so we're going to configure that uh, for layer 3 mobility master redundancy so what we need to do is give it a name of course um, it's managed device ipsec tunnel and then it asks for the master switch ip address or fqdn so the first one is 10 10 202 20 that's the first mobility master so the VPN concentrator no. Does it go through a VPN concentrator? No. Is the virtual mobility master? That's yes. Authentication met this preset key with IP. Also here it will set up a uh, IPsec tunnel. And that's where it asks, do you want to enable L3 redundancy? Yes or no? By default, no. But we are going to configure it right now so yes so then it will ask for the second the secondary mobility master in my case that's 10 10 203 20. does it go via vpn concentrator no is it a virtual mobility master yes and again ipsec key because this is another ipsec tunnel uh, the VLAN network ID in this case could be one. That's fine. It can be an access port. Okay, my IP address is 10, 10, 200, and I think it was 120. Yes, 10, 10, 201. DNS. V6, no. Then a port channel, no. Country code, Netherlands, yes. Time zone is Europe. Amsterdam. Time in UTC, 1508. 17, 16, so it is 1545, 21. In UTC, the date is a fine. Admin account. One more time the complete uh, setup so you'll see uh, two mobility masters the primary one at 202.20 and the secondary at 203.20 and we say yes and that will reboot the uh, managed device so the virtual mobility controller has booted and has uh, contacted the mobility master you can see that on the mobility master the primary one in this case 
uh, and you see one controller is in unknown state and you see the MAC address here. Copy the MAC address because you need that to edit this, this controller to the Mobility Master. Go to your web browser. And in this folder I want to add this controller. It's a virtual mobility controller. MAC address and I called it VMC10. Submit. And the controller will be added to this node over here. So after a couple of minutes, you will see that the configuration state is updated successful for the newly added virtual mobility controller. If you go to the graphical user interface and refresh that, you also see that there's one controller active right now, and that's the VMC 10. So let's go to that uh, controller on the CLI right now. That's over here. And if you do show crypto IPsec SA, you will see that there is just one active uh, IPsec session from the virtual mobility controller to the primary mobility master. At this time, there is no tunnel from the mobility controller to the secondary mobility master. There's always one tunnel up. You can see what the status is by issuing show master L3 redundancy status. You see that the master is up at 202 and the secondary master at 203 is also up. Um, so what will happen right now is if the, if the, if the primary master uh, is not reachable anymore or uh, crashes, uh, then this uh, mobility controller will switch over to the second mobility master, the secondary mobility master. Uh, keep in mind that that takes a considerable amount of time. So um, it, will at, uh, it will take at least 15 minutes before you see it up on the secondary uh, mobility master. Now that does not mean that then the mobility controller itself does not work anymore because it does not need the mobility master to operate so clients can connect can authenticate and everything works fine in that period that the switch over is taking place so i'm gonna shut down the active master and then pause the video for uh, 15 minutes and then you will see what uh, what happens uh, after 15 uh, minutes so waited uh, 15 minutes and let's have a look at uh, Layer three, layer 3 redundancy status right now. So this is uh, from the point of view of the mobility controller. You will see that the 202, the previous master, is uh, still down. I switched it off uh, and that the secondary master is uh, now up. Also, if you check the crypto session, you will see that it now switched to 203.20 from 202. If you look at the um, mobility master itself, so I'm now logged into 203, the backup one, you'll see that the controller is there and everything is uh, working fine. So you see that within 15 minutes, the uh, MDs will all switch over from the primary layer 3 mobility master to the secondary layer 3 mobility master. And if I bring back the primary uh, back to live again uh, all the controllers will switch back uh, to the primary one again uh, once that's uh, running fine again so there is a preemption uh, they will go back to the active uh, layer 3 mobility controller or mobility master sorry not mobility controller so this uh, was the last uh, thing i wanted to show you on uh, layer 3 uh, redundancy um, please like or add your comments and also please subscribe to the channel so that you will be notified when a new video is posted. Thank you for watching and see you next time.